Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Leviticus chapter 24. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, Jewish, that they bring unto thee pure oh, is oil, olive, olive oil, beaten. Jesus Christ was beaten beyond recognition by the cat of nine tails, by fists. For the light, Jesus is the light. The oil is a type of the Holy Spirit. The lamp is the type of the world. Uh, word, excuse me. And the light is Jesus. You see the Holy Spirit. We see the Word. And we see Jesus. To cause the lamps to burn continually. Now let's look at Psalms 119, 105. A lot of scripture tonight. 119 105 Psalms 119 105 The Bible says Psalms 119 105 Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We move over to verse 130 about the word, the lamp. The entrance of thy words giveth life, it giveth understanding unto the simple. The word of God needs that lamp, and that lamp that's in the temple. Overshines the table that has the twelve bread, the bread of life. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. They're laid out six and six. Sixty-six books. Now when we look at Proverbs 6.23. Proverbs 6.23 about this lamb. Lamp, light, you need light. Satan brings darkness. God is light, Satan is, is dark. 623, for thy commandment is a lamp, and thy law is a light. What's that? What is that? Paul said that's a schoolmaster. Had I not known the law, I would not know that I'm a sinner. Without the Bible. Listen, I grew up in a church, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. And I had no light. I knew what the commandments were. Without the Bible, it didn't mean nothing. Okay, thou shalt not. But when Jesus Christ comes in and Jesus says, listen, that Bible says thou shalt not. And then it becomes more like, oh, okay, now I understand. In the Gospel of John, chapter 1. We're going to see something remarkable in chapter 1 of John. It's scripture with scripture. Study. John. A more, I don't want to say perfect with Matthew, Luke, and Mark, and Luke, but 
John seems to come to the full conclusion of Jesus Christ. For me as a Gentile. He says in one one. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. All right. We got there's the word. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. The word. Without him was not anything made that was made. You may have a telephone, but everything that made that telephone came from God. God didn't make the telephone, but he made all the minerals, the stones, and the, the materials. Now, in him was life. And the life was the light of man. The light shineth in darkness. And darkness comprehended it not. When you tell a lost people about Jesus, uh, they have no understanding. Unless the Holy Spirit comes in with the oil. You know, if a ship sees a lighthouse far away, if he doesn't obey that lighthouse and rams the rocks, that's his fault. But the light is there. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, capital L. That's Jesus. That all men through him might believe. He was not the light, capital L, but was sent to bear witness of that light, capital L. That was the true light, capital L, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Every man that's born has the light of Jesus Christ and God. You got to be educated out of it. He was in the world. Now watch this. And the world was made by him. Now here's the darkness. The world knew him not. They refused. This room, the holy place, would be completely dark without that lamp. And that light, the oil, oil is the fuel for that light in the tabernacle. And it was beaten, not pressed. You press a Bible, used to be. Gutenberg press. You pressed it, is what it meant, press. But for Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, he was beaten to give us light. So when somebody professes to be Jesus, you got to look him straight in the face have you ever been beaten for, for sin? With all the other thousand questions about the scripture. Where Jesus Christ died according to the scriptures. Without the veil of the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation. There's, a main, there's the holy place and there's a holy place. This is not in the holy place. The most holy, excuse me. It's in the holy place. And Aaron ordered it from the evening unto the morning before the Lord continually. That needed constant day and night attention by the high priest. you got to trim those wicks. I don't know completely about uh, That's my wife does with oil uh, lamps and stuff like that. She, she knows what, when it needs to be cut, uh, cut, trimmed, or filled. It shall be a statute forever in your generation. Now, how do you know the Jews are not right? There's no light. There's not even a te temple or a tabernacle. So God says that light is to be burning always. And one of the prophets said there's going to be a famine in the land, not a famine of food or water. It's going to be a famine of the word of God. There's a, there, that great light is going to be turned off one day for the men in the world. People don't appreciate in Daytona Beach when they hear me preach the gospel. But I am giving them the light for their stormy lives. And if they don't adhere to the light, they're going to crash into hell and burn in the lake of fire forever. He shall order, this is Aaron, shall order the lamps upon the pure candlestick before the Lord continuing. Now this would be every high priest. Including Eli. Let's go to 1 Samuel 3.3. 3. Uh, 
Was the priesthood perfect? Absolutely not. That's why Jesus came. It, the Bible says in, in roundabout words, not complete quoting scripture. If that law had done what it was supposed to do, which it cannot, there would have been no need for Jesus. So when somebody comes up to you and says, well, you know, I keep the law, or I'm a good person, impossible. No one was perfect. And I believe I said three, 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 three. You know what John 3 3 says? You must be born again. 3 3. So let's go with verse 1. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. There's the high priest. Boy is, he, boy, is he a wicked one. And the word, oh, look at that. The word of the Lord was precious in those days. It was a famine of the word. It, it, it was not out there. They were not teaching the word of God. So what's going to happen? What's going to happen to America when the word is going to be precious? Can I say the word extinguish? America is not yet fully dark because there are people out there who profess the Bible and preach the Bible. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time. What time? you got to have scripture. you got to read Leviticus 23. At that time, we'll see in a minute, when Eli was laid down in his place. Oh, so it's night time. But it said over here in 24, excuse me, Leviticus 24, that Aaron shall order it from the evening and unto the morning. Well, Eli's going to sleep. Let's see what happened with Eli. And his eyes began to wax dim, and he could not see. And ere beforehand, foremost, the lamp of God, capital G, were in the holy place, went out in the temple of the Lord. Just so you know where we are, where the ark of the the ark of God was. We're in the we're in the tabernacle. We're and it's gone out. Eli went to bed and did not trim or fill those lamps. And boom, it goes out. There was no care. And let's go back to over here. And 24 again. In verse 3, and the Lord said, Before the Lord continually. Eli didn't do that. He didn't care. That's a sorry state. And that's where America's going. She's going to go out. There's still hope for Israel. There's been hope in Israel. Ezra, Nehemiah. But once that light goes out in America, the gospel, that's it. It's a Gentile nation. God's just because he, those Jews rejected him. Gentiles are only in because God says, I'm going to make you guys angry by those Gentiles, but they're going to love me more than you right now. And when the, the preaching dies out and it's dying out, as we go generation to generation, the generation the kids that are in church today are not going to have the Bible that's today. It's getting worse and worse. You'll have more fun time and candy and play time and snack time. You're going to have a kindergarten church in the future. Verse 5. And thou shalt take fine flour and bake twelve cakes thereof. Now this is going to be the showbread. This is the bread of God. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Two tenths. <laughs> shoot, excuse me. I knew it was going to say. Two tenths deal shall be in one cake. Two tenths of fine flour for the twelve cakes. Thou shalt set them in two rows. Six on a row. That's twelve. Six and six. Sixty-six books lit by the word of God that's not supposed to go out. You know what happens when you don't read your word? You know what happens when you don't get in your Bible and study? That lamp dies. 
and eventually you put away your Bible, you close your Bible, you won't open your Bible, and then that light goes out, Eli. And you may you may open it in church, but then you'll you you'll go to a church where you don't even open it. There are churches out there they don't even carry Bibles. I've been in church one time, you know, we get out out of service, service is over. I've seen the kids throw that Bible, chuck it across the blacktop of the basketball court. I've seen Bibles fall off the roof of the cars driving down the road. That's a shame. Now, I'm not going to make the Bible an idol, but, you know, the Bible says that that Bible is God. God holds the word more than the Son as a testimony. Thou shalt set them in two rows, six on a row upon the pure table before the Lord. That's the table that's in the holy place. Thou shalt put pure frankincense upon each roll. That's one of the gifts to Jesus at two years old. Frankincense, here it is, on the bread. I got to wonder, I'm assuming you can throw it in the garbage can. I'm not a mother... I have two babies, but I don't. You gotta wonder maybe if that frankincense maybe somehow had to you, you put the baby in it or something because here it is on the bread, and we just read John one said Jesus is the Word. I, I could be wrong, and I plead the blood of Jesus Christ if I am wrong. But let's see something else on the pure table before the Lord. Now, what was that pure table? What was pure of that table? You want to guess the the other gift? gold and the myrrh what's the myrrh that's used for death a two year two year old child that is forward to death by being beaten to be the light of the world and the world knew him not so, put frankincense on each row, that it may be on the bread. Now, it's remarkable how God is. Because before we do these studies as a family, we read the Bible throughout the year. I mean, we read it all the way through. So as a family, guess what we read in Corinthians today? We read about the Lord's Supper. We read about the bread. That bread is to be taken to say that Jesus is coming. We're to take that cup and say, Jesus is coming. He's going, he died. He suffered and died to remember that. He's coming. Be on the bread for a memorial. Well, look at that. It's amazing how God works in this family with scripture, with scripture. And we don't plan nothing. We didn't have Bible study last night because we were tired in the Lord. I said, we'll read our Bible for, for today and then we'll pray and then... Just relax. And we were pooped. And God says, and it bothered me. God said, you know, just don't read. Just read your Bible and just relax tonight. You've already did another message about hymns. And I'll save chapter 24 for your reading of December 12, 2017. So it will match for you and your daughter. How's that? It's great serving the Lord. Even an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now, here's another one. Here, here comes another great nugget. If you don't get this, you, you won't get the Bible. Every Sabbath, he shall set it in order before the Lord continually. That's Saturday. Saturday morning. He, he makes the bread. He brings it into the holy place. He takes up the old bread. And he puts down the new bread. And he brings the old bread out. And they can eat it. Alright. Sabbath. Get, that's a key word now. Let's look at 1 Samuel 21.4. More scripture today. 1 Samuel 21, 4. 
And if you don't get this, you're going to get it now. And Jesus, using scripture, and a little bit what I call sarcasm, 21.4. And Jesus is going to tell those Pharisees, Sadducees at one time, have you not read the scripture? So let's read the scripture and see what happens. So David runs away. He's on the run. He comes to Ahimelech, the priest. Saul is after him. Verse 2, And David said to Ahimelech, the priest, The king has commanded me a business. No, liar. Has said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business where I sent thee. No. And what I have commanded thee. No. And I have appointed my servants in such and such a place. No. Now therefore, what is under thy hand? It's kind of interesting what's under there. It's like he's holding it. Like a wrist thing. Give me five loaves of the bread in my hand. And what there is present. I see you carrying some bread. Can I have it? And the priest answered David and said, This is no common bread under my hand. But there is hallowed bread. That's the bread we're reading about right now. That's the show bread. David has met Ahimelech coming out of the temple. He has changed the bread. Do you know what you know what day this is? According to the scripture? It's a Sabbath. The day of changing the bread. It's important. So he asked for five, there's seven left. And David eats, and the men with him. David's a priest. There he is. God has not struck, he's eating most holy bread. That only the priest could have. And let's see what Jesus had to say about Matthew 12, 3. Sabbath, remember that. Because Jesus is going to use scripture as he does, but man, he's gonna he's gonna fry them. We'll start in Matthew 12 1. Scripture with scripture, the Bible is so tasty. Twelve one. And that time Jesus went on the Sabbath day. Ooh, okay, through the corn. You know, you can make corn flour. This is wheat. This is not like popcorn corn. This is wheat. Flour. That sound familiar? But they're in a field. They're a field of wheat or barley. And his disciples were a hungered and began to pluck the ears of corn and eat. That sound like David and his men? Bible's so great. But when the Pharisees saw it, these are people of the temple, they said unto him, Jesus, Behold thy disciples, do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. It's a changing of the bread. David was at the temple at the Sabbath day eating with his troops on the run. But he said unto them, Jesus, have you not read what David did? We just read that. First Samuel. When he was a hungered and they that were with him, how he entered into the house of God. That tells us first Samuel. And did eat of the showbread, that hallowed bread. There's the showbread that matches Leviticus 24. Which was not lawful for him to eat. He wasn't supposed to eat it. But he did. And neither for them that were with him, his troops. But only for the priests. We're reading about that today. 
Have you not read in law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blank, you know, they have to do the circumcision, they have to do the bread. They were working to do that bread, but yet it was not a violation of the scriptures. So here is the scripture Jesus says about David. Now here comes the sarcasm. You guys are so angry about the Sabbath. That day that David showed up to the temple was the Sabbath day. He violated that. And then on top of that, they were changing the bread on the Sabbath day. The priest was working. So here's David on a journey. Here's the priest doing work. And you, you are bawling out my people for having wheat or barley. I don't know what kind of field it was. Which is taken, ground up, and made into fine flour, which is made into that showbread. Now, isn't Jesus great? And one more point about those Pharisees. They are yelling at the bread of life right now. And he's going to sink their ship about the bread of life in John chapter 6. So scripture is scripture. Look where we are in chapter 24 verse 8. We are at the same time when David shows up. The bread has been changed. His disciples are on the Sabbath day eating wheat or barley, which is made for the bread. Order before the Lord continually. I want to be like ever did that. Being taken from the children of Israel by an everlasting covenant. It shall be Aaron's and his sons. That's what Jesus, that's the priest. David was an extremely weird kind of priest. Being a type of Jesus Christ. David was a Judean priest. That's not the office. And Hebrew said, I think it's Hebrew said, you know, of the tribe that God never said anything about the priesthood, Judah. Where Jesus sprang out of. And they shall eat it. In the holy place, the priests. Now Jesus said, which we didn't read in 1 Samuel 21, 4 very roughly. Jesus said that David went into the temple. It's a possibility with what this verse says here that David was actually maybe in the holy place. That, again, I'm pressing that one. It may not be true, but what Jesus said and what we read here. For is most holy, and David and his men eat it. You're yelling about my men here. They're taking corn, and, and they're breaking it off the, the, the husk. David walked into the holy place and ate my bread. How's that? Would you guys let anybody walk in the temple today and eat your bread? Absolutely not. David did. Unto him for an offering of the Lord made by fire by a perpetual statue. And then we get a little footnote here. And the son of an Ish, Israel, okay, Israelitish woman, he's Jewish, whose father was an Egyptian, half-breed, went out among the children of Israel. Now this child here is completely opposite of Timothy. Timothy had an Israelite woman as his mother and his grandmother. But his father was a Greek. So we see a complete reversal of children here. And went out among the children of Israel. And this son of the Israelitish woman and a man of Israel strove together in the camp. Here's this guy and here's a Jewish person. This is three times Moses has to deal with this kind of thing. Moses sees an Egyptian whipping and beating a, a Jew. And he goes in there and he kills him. Hides him in the sand. And then he comes out the next day and there's two Jews battling it out. You know, here's two. Well, here's a Jew and a half Jew. Moses, no, there's something to this. I don't know what it is. Moses deals with an Egyptian and a Hebrew. Then he deals with a Hebrew and a Hebrew. And then years later, now he's dealing with an Egyptian Hebrew. And he's dealing with another Hebrew. There's something to that. I don't know what it is. 
And the Israelite woman's son blasphemed the name of the Lord. They get so heated and he says whatever about God's name. And cursed. And they brought him unto Moses. <laughs> and his mother's name was Shehubath, the daughter of Deberi, of the tribe. There's that tribe of Dan. That's a weird tribe. And it's weird that we know the mother's name, but we do not know the son's name. And they put him in ward, a jail, a holding cell. I heard a preacher one time say one time, oh, you don't find no jails in, 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 the, in the, the life of Israel. What is that? Even if it's a room, just a room or a tent, he's still a criminal and he's still... Goes on to courtrooms today. They arrest somebody. They may not be fully charged, but they bring them to a holding cell. That the mind of the Lord might be shown to them. They want to know, what do we do with this guy? Bring forth him that has cursed without the camp. They, when they, this is what the Lord said to Moses. Bring him out. Get him out of the camp. And let the... And let all that heard him lay their hands upon his head. That is a type of offering. Remember all the times of Leviticus we, we read that the person is to put their head on that animal and slay that animal. These are the people who say, I heard him do that. I heard him say that. You did? Yes. You're going to be the first one going to put him to death. Now, if you've got any conscience... And if it has not been seared, if you lied, you're not going to want to do this. You've got to have a guilty, wicked heart if you're going to be a false witness about this. The Bible says you've got to have two or three witnesses. Lay their hands upon his head and let all the congregation stone him. Again, that's a brutal death. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Whosoever curseth his God shall bear his sin. This guy is going to die an awful death. He's going to be in hell. No painkiller as rocks are being thrown in the head, in the shin, in the elbow, in the chest. Bones being crushed. I don't, get, I don't think they're just, you know, tossing them like, you know, playing softball. You know, some people, that, if I get, you would have some people there, they would get the biggest rocks they could get. He that blasphemed the name of the Lord shall surely be put to death. Boy, if you did that in America today, it would be no population. And all the congregation shall certainly, certainly stone him. As well the stranger, if he's a gentile, he's half free. You catch a Gentile cursing God's name. You stone him. There's no U.S. Constitution in, in the nation of Israel in the Old Testament. You don't have the right to serve another God. You don't have the right for uh, religion. You do, you get killed. That's why America's run rampant today. Freedom to believe whatever you want to believe. But you can't have God in the schools and you can't have... God in the prisons anymore. They're taking God out of the prisons. As he that is born in the land, Israel, when he blasphemed the name of the Lord, shall be put to death. Capital punishment. He that killeth any man shall surely be put to death. God's going to review about the capital punishment. He that killeth a beast shall make it good, beast for beast. You kill a guy's cow, you owe him a cow. There's no capital punishment for killing animals. Despite what America is about, oh, he killed a dog. You just give him another dog, God said. 
Oh, you ought to go to jail. It doesn't say go to jail. Just give him another dog. Give him the amount of money to buy another dog. America has more for saving wells and people who, who abuse animals than they do actually killing real people. He shall kill a beast, he shall make it good, beast for beast. If any man cause a blemish in his neighbor, as he has done, so shall it be done unto him. He gave you a black eye, he's allowed to give you one back. That would make you think about doing a crime, wouldn't it? How about if you shot somebody and God says, okay, now you stand there while he gets to shoot you. You want to smack your wife around? Okay. Let me get her father and let him have a couple rounds with you. Full force and no eye for eye, foot for foot. That would stop abuse. You try to carjack someone, you drag the person down the road, guess what you're going to get? Road burns. This is, this is a pretty good law. This, this would keep many people out of trouble. Uh, a breach for a breach, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. Knock his tooth out, you get your tooth knocked out. As he has caused a blemish in a man, so shall it be done unto him again. You make a man maim, guess what's going to happen to you? That's not jail overcrowding. Make you think twice. He that killeth a beast, he shall restore it. And he that killeth a man, he shall be put to death. Oh, oh, look at that. Animals lovers would not love God. Peter would be very upset with that. Jesus said, aren't you more more profitable than a, a, a sparrow? Aren't you more important than a sparrow? Huh? People think, oh, my puppy dog's going to heaven. No, they're not. Dogs and cats are unclean animals. They got paws. And God says, if you hit the dog, you're going down the road and you hit the dog, you don't go to jail. You just say, man, we're going to figure out what the value of that dog is so you can get another one. It's that simple. We've already gone through laws like this before. You shall have one manner of law, as well for the stranger as for one born in your own country. What's that? There's, a, there's the same law for the Jewish man as there's the same law for the Gentile. We do not judge about race, creed, color, or sex. You kill somebody, you die. You knock out someone's tooth, <laughs> smile, you're going to get it. I am the Lord your God. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel that, that you should bring forth him. Wow, God put a little extra in there in that one. He revealed the death penalty. And he revealed in his revelation to Moses about the children of Israel. He said, you are more valuable than animals. Oh, fluffy dog, he's going to heaven. And I've just had people to get angry at me over a Facebook post about animals don't go to heaven. There you go. Moses spake to the children of Israel that they should bring forth him that had cursed out of the camp and stone him with stones. And the children of Israel did as the Lord commanded Moses. And he did. And he's in hell today. God wouldn't send me to hell. We don't even know what this guy's name is. We know his mother's name. But we don't know what his name is. 